It's my third time recording this video now, but I dropped out of college. I was a computer science student, and now I'm I'm really nothing at all, but a small YouTuber reading some computer science textbooks for fun. I'm gonna tell the entire story in this video, but if you guys could please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you're interested in my computer science and now semi-self-taught programming journey, then all of that would be greatly appreciated. My name is Alex Bianchi, and I was a computer science student at Seton Hall, but before we get into that, I would like to back up the video to high school because I think it's really important to paint a context of what my life is. I figured this video might be seen by people who haven't seen prior videos on my channel. If you have, then uh, maybe I'll put a timestamp around here that you can just skip to for my background, but honestly, it's probably best that you just stick to the, the flow of the video because I might have a thought now that I haven't said before. So back in high school, I resented the education system and I did not want to go to college. I didn't think it was necessary. And because I was graduating high school with an associate's degree, I already had done a fair amount of college and I wasn't quite a fan. So I didn't want to go to college and I lined up an internship. I was also interviewing for Gary Vaynerchuk to see if I could intern for him. So I'm like, awesome, things are happening. I can do this, I don't need college. And then this little thing called the coronavirus, very, very tiny, you can't, you can't see it anywhere, but somehow it is everywhere. And it basically shuts everything down that I had been working for, which was, was a big hit. It definitely, definitely got me down a bit. But I figured at that point, well, college might be the best bet for me right now. I kind of felt really stuck and there was this really easy path ahead of me with college. I'm lucky enough, privileged enough to have my parents paying for it. So I, I didn't really see anything I could lose. That being said, during the entire college application process, I, I wasn't, I don't want to say I was half-assing it because I definitely, I, I definitely put effort and I care into the colleges that I were selecting, but it wasn't the, the thing that I was thinking about the same way that it is for other kids when they're applying to colleges. So I wound, wind up at Seton Hall, which is a private institution, which wound up being a mistake, and I go for business economics, which is honestly the defaultiest of all default options at college. When I had all the options for places that I could go, I was between computer science and economics, and I got into a better business school than I did a computer science school, so I went that route. And it took me about T-minus three weeks in the semester to realize that I wanted nothing to do with majoring in business. And I don't wanna pile on business majors here. I know they get a lot of flack, it's kind of a meme to hate, but it was not the path for me. And at the same time, I'm taking this programming class, I wind up teaching myself most of the programming that we would learn for the entire semester in the first few weeks. And from there on out, it was just teaching myself and teaching myself and getting ahead and I loved it. I wind up transferring out of the business school to pursue either economics in the arts and sciences school, which would have taken more of my community college credits or computer science. And that was kind of it as far as Seton Hall is concerned. I was relatively homeless. I didn't have a path that fit me. I was really absorbed in what my future looked like. I was constantly configuring different plans because I never never really felt content with anything. I didn't have faith that things would work out. I, I really, I, I just wasn't settled. So I go through the semester, there are points where I'm really down, I'm pretty miserable, and there are points where things are going really good, and there were definitely some highlights. I participate in some clubs and activities. I s start a data science club. I get a 3.8 GPA, straight A's. I love this philosophy program that I was in. So it, it definitely was not all bad. And for the most part, I loved Seton Hall. And if I were to major in philosophy or economics, I would certainly stay there. But in the end of the day, I'm not. And I fell in love with computer science. The way that I did that was when the winter came, I said, okay, I'm gonna dedicate myself to studying computer science for the next couple of months. We had an extended winter break because of coronavirus and they got rid of spring break. So during those couple of months, I document that here on my YouTube channel. You can see DIY Data Science and the other videos that I've published for the last little bit. And I, I love it. I really stood the test. I said, if I, if I really love computer science, then I should be able to do it nonstop for like two months straight. And it passed that test with flying colors. I am nothing but more passionate now than I was two months ago. So I made the decision. I said, obviously computer science is the path that I want to pursue. I want to be a software engineer. I want to go down that route. And it made so much sense. I've been playing with computers my entire life. I've always kind of looked longingly at the engineers that I was kind of friends with and said, oh, I wish I could be like 
you for some reason never thinking I could be like them, even though I know I'm more than smart enough to do it. You don't need to be particularly smart to be a software engineer. Uh, but I, I, I make the decision to go into computer science and I'm at Seen Hall now. And how is Seen Hall's computer science program? Not so hot. So that's kind of, you can kind of see where this is going. I talked to some upperclassmen, some graduates, and basically all of them said to get out of the computer science program at Seton Hall, and it honestly wasn't looking very promising. They used Dr. Racket, which is some weird, relatively unused programming language to teach all of their classes. They have a very small faculty. They don't have many resources dedicated to it. There aren't that many kids that go there for computer science. It's not ranked for anything. The career center is definitely tuned more toward the, towards the business school than arts and sciences and especially computer science. So it just really wasn't the place for me. On top of that, it was super expensive and I was starting to feel this kind of guilt that I was charging my parents money that I wouldn't spend myself. So Seton Hall, I wasn't really fitting there. And from there, there are a few options. You can just suck it up and get out of Seton Hall with a philosophy or economics degree because it makes more sense for the school or bite the bullet and go for computer science or you can drop out or you can transfer. And I wound up going for those latter two options. And I guess now is where I can finally say that no, I'm, I'm not quite dropping out. Yes, I'm dropping out this semester. I will not have a school, but I've applied to a couple of transfer schools that I will be going to in the fall. NJIT and Rutgers are the top choices right now. They're both top ranked computer science universities. They're both fantastic. I can make a video comparing NJIT and Rutgers if you would like to see that. That would definitely be an interesting video. But there are a few things that transferring is going to offer me. A better computer science curriculum where I'm going to learn more, better opportunities, a better environment where I'm going to be surrounded by other CS kids. It's going to be cheaper because both of those are state universities as opposed to the private universities. And it's going to take me less time because they'll take more of the credits that I accumulated in high school. So I kind of start putting all this together and I come to my family and I start talking with them about it. And it's not the easiest conversations to have because, well, I'm dropping out of college and no parent likes to hear that their kid will be leaving college. But once kind of the whole picture was painted, we talked some things over. I spoke to some professors and got their opinions on it because I met some fantastic people at Seton Hall. Uh, it, the decision became pretty obvious that it was the right call to make. So I finally get to fulfill my life dream of being a college dropout before I re-enroll and go back. Something important really happened this semester though. I mentioned how I was pretty resentful of the education system and I didn't value a college education. And while I still think there is so much corruption in the way that academia is structured and paid for and college colleges are too expensive and you should not go into $100,000 worth of debt for a social sciences degree. And there, there are so many caveats to everything that I'm saying right now. For the most part, if you're in the privileged situation of not having to pay a lot because of your parents or because you get a scholarship or because you can go to community college for two years and then go to a state university for two years. And there's like in the state of New Jersey, there's a law that those credits have to transfer to any state university. So it's legally required. Other states don't have that. So the transferring can get weird. But point being, if you can make it work, you can make it work. When it comes to computer science in particular, a lot of people say that you can become a software engineer without having that degree. And while I still think that's very true and you can do it if you really set your heart out for it, there's also situations where the people saying that, sure, they don't have a computer science degree, but they have an economics degree from Penn State. And it's like, okay, dude, yeah, like your college degree still, it says something. You still went to college, you had the experience. And when it comes to the experience, networking, meeting people, having a social life, meeting professors, having the opportunities and the structure of college, I do think there is some value there. In my particular case, I think if I have the privilege where my parents have been saving up my entire life to send me to college, then I am kind of morally obligated to accept that because other people would kill to be in the position that I'm in and I should kind of be grateful for that and accept it and not make my life harder for the sake of saying that I did it with for the sake of saying that I came from less when I'm successful it's like no take take what's given to you. I've gotten some really positive feedback from my professors and family members so that's awesome. I it was obviously not the easiest decision to make and now that people are saying you're making the right call if you want to be an engineer Seton Hall just isn't the place and there's nothing wrong with that and while I will miss the leadership program and the honors program and the philosophy classes that I was going to take, I know that this is the right path for me. My, I can best describe me going to Seton Hall as me just like wandering in a direction that kind of made sense. 
but I wasn't particularly going anywhere. With these Rutgers or NJIT with computer science, I, I am passionate, I am determined, I am looking forward to my future, and that's something that couldn't be said six months ago when I was going into Seton Hall. And now this semester, what is the plan? Well, I'm gonna be teaching myself data structures and algorithms and completing as many computer science projects as possible. Hopefully to get an internship this summer, next summer, in the fall, whenever. Uh, and really just load up that resume with projects because for those of you watching I figured some of my family might watch this so computer science and software engineering internships really value a pr Project multiple projects on your resume that kind of just show that you have this programming chops Because in college and university they teach you a lot of theory to programming But not necessarily a lot of practical skills and the theory is valuable But when you're hiring an intern the theory isn't going to have them actually Programming and producing things that are valuable to the company and the data structures and algorithms That's basically the way that interviews are conducted in the software engineering space it's like having a really hard logic problem that's particularly kind of catered to the way that computers work and you have to program a solution to it. So a data structure is kind of the format that you might solve that problem with and the algorithm is the way that you kind of interact with that data structure and make the format solve the problem. I hope that explained yeah, I hope I explained that correctly to a non-computer science person. I'm also taking Calculus 2 at my community college because it's going to transfer to my state university, whichever one I wind up going to, and it's still a way to progress in my degree. So things are on the up and up. Things are good. Things are great. I feel good about where I'm going. I feel good with the decision that I made. I feel good with what this semester is going to be, and I am very excited to start taking some CS classes at some good CS schools in the fall. So I'm sure that I will be making tons of videos during this time off. I hope to kind of upgrade my upload frequency to three videos a week, see how that works out. I'm going to be going to jujitsu a little bit less too, but that's going to be it for this video, guys. Please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you think I made the right decision. And if you want to see the rest of my programming journey, my name is Alex Bianchi, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Peace.